I'm so excited now because I'm going to be giving my first uh, violin playing tutorial really from the basic okay we're going to go through you know just holding the violin through to playing really hard pieces and I hope you have the patience but I think you'll be really happy with the result so here we go this is your violin I've got a pickup here or part of a pickup here which I really prefer you don't have at the moment you might use it later on but please try to refrain from using it because you're gonna not you're not gonna be enjoying the sound of a violin as it's supposed to be as of yet okay that's called a bridge that's your bridge okay it looks a bit like a bridge as well that's the chin rest this is the fingerboard the ebony here the black part the strings we have four of them the pegs these are for tuning and the scroll of the violin the shoulders the back the belly and a shoulder rest all right and the bouts low upper bouts and lower bouts um, I've got a screw here for the E string which is a finished string because when you use a peg it might move accidentally too much and then it might tear the string so here you can move more modestly and more gently all right uh, if you don't have a shoulder rest yet what you can do is just use a plain sponge a kitchen sponge and fix it in place on the right hand side here so under the side where you have the chin rest on the same side here on the right hand side use an elastic band uh, just fix it the band with both of the uh, both of the sides of the string coming down on this side over and over here okay fix it onto this button at the edge okay uh, well after the tail piece that's a tail piece I forgot to mention tail, tail piece all right um, we're not going to be using the bow yet but I do want to tell you already now um, the bow is very fragile it actually can become a very expensive part of your instrument it's with expensive instruments they do not come together usually with beginner kits they will come together in a box but just so you know a bow can even cost over a hundred thousand dollars yes good bows are made of Pernambuco which is a very rare and uh, becoming an extinct tree um, there is a screw at the bottom of a bow right which when you fasten it, when you um, you uh, turn it around um, clockwise, the this is called a frog uh, goes backwards and it's ac it actually stretches the the hair which is horse hair from its tail. Okay, uh, it stretches it backwards and therefore you get more of a distance between the wood and the and the bow. Nice, isn't it? Okay, that's uh, a lot about the bow, but we don't need that yet. As I mentioned, we're going to calibrate ourselves to learn how to play with the bow very soon, like within a couple of lessons, hopefully. But we're going to do things that are not less important. I promise you, actually more important. Right, so we begin off with... I'm, I'm actually filming the other way around, so I can't see my preview, but I'm doing it for your sake so you can see everything the way I see it, all right? So I'm using my left hand, well... You're going to be using your left hand, even if you're a left-handed person, because that's the way to play. I know many people will not agree with that because there are very few violins that are sold with a left-handed setup. But if you're ever going to try to play in an orchestra or in a band, many times you'll, you'll, you're, you're, fun, you're going to find that you're in a problem because you're going to be hitting other people on the other side. So this is actually the, the conform way to do it. The greatest violin, well, arguably the greatest violinist of all times, Yasha Heifetz, was a left-handed himself. So if he did it, and he did it really well, one could even argue that left-handed people could even play the violin better than right-handed people. I'm right-handed, never mind. So it's just a debate, not for, for our tutorial, but just please try to do it the normal way we all do it. It was so for ages, for, for hundreds of years, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to... First of all, we, we can hold the violin with our left hand, as I said. Try to avoid, by the way, using necklaces, earrings, um, yeah, at least on your left hand and your left, your earring on your right, uh, on your left ear, okay, so it doesn't hum, buzz, or anything against your violin, okay? And do cut your fingernails, okay? It's really important, all right? Okay, left hand, once again, sorry about that. So, my left hand is over the shoulder of the violin. You can do that, all right? Or you can just hold it this way, okay? Let's not fidget too much about that. That's not a, 
it's not a law about that. But what is very important is the moment after you do that, you twist the violin anti-clockwise, approximately 120 degrees. Don't overdo, don't strain yourself. Just, you know, this way. And bring the violin over to your shoulder. But not just anywhere, not this way. Okay? What you're gonna do is when you, you're gonna put it to a high place, okay? Very high, up here. How high exactly? Well, I'll tell you, there's a trick for that. Between your trapezoid muscle here and your collarbone, just draw an imaginary line connecting these two and put a tangent on that. Imagine that it just sits up there, okay? So this way and preferably coming from up and there downwards, okay? And not, try not to just slam the button somewhere like that and that's really bad, okay? Because you're gonna be slouching over time. If it starts this way, you're gonna find yourself playing like this over just in two minutes time. So really avoid doing that up and there. Now, if it's in the right place, you move your head just a little bit to the left, okay? And then downwards. Okay, so I'm not changing anything in the center of gravity of my body. You can shift from your left, left right to your, uh, your left, sorry, from your left foot to your right foot over time, but that's no problem. But what you want to do is that this, this part is very relaxed, okay? So you put it down here and then move ever so slightly and downwards. No tilting, really important. You don't want an inflammation somewhere here, really, okay? So just put it this way, a bit to the left and down. So. Now you say, but this is called a chin rest. Yes, it is called a chin rest, but in fact, it's caught under the jawbone, not under the chin, okay? This is the way you hold a violin, you see? I can walk around, I can bounce around, I can eat and talk on the phone while I do that, because this is the right way to hold a violin, not with your hand. And therefore, please remember, after you do that, already start practicing at holding your violin this way. Don't be afraid. At the beginning, obviously, you'll be really terrified of doing it, but you can just help yourself with the thumb being round here, underneath, and your fingers round, pointing downwards at the upper bout. Don't leave some, you should leave some air here. Don't do that, okay? Don't press it against it, and definitely not something like that. I call that the pizza plate, okay, because it's like somebody's a waiter arriving with a pizza plate. Don't do that. Don't give it support from underneath. Everything round, okay? And also the thumb, as I said. Great. So now we have got the hand of the hang of that. Right hand, okay, that's the biggest part of violin playing. Arguably, they say that the right hand, the bow, is the hardest thing. We're not doing the bow, but we're practicing the right hand now, which is already calibrating it. What we're going to do, lift your right hand. Thumb under the key, uh, sorry, under the fingerboard, which is this black one, right? And under the thinnest string, that's the E string, okay? Or me in the French version. Keep it round and just anchor it at the, at the edge here, okay? If you do it correctly, you'll see this kind of sign on your thumb, okay? And what you wanna do is keep your fingers very gently closed, but don't, don't, um, don't make any fists, okay? Like not, not with power or tension. With a round finger as well, you can pluck the strings. Now you might notice that I'm actually moving also with my elbow. It goes, it conforms with the string I play. It's as though it's taking an elevator up and down. All right, so it's a fourth, the fourth floor for the, for the thickest string, the G or Sol in the French version. Third, uh, uh, fir third floor for, uh, for the D, which is Ré. Second floor for the A, which is La. And first for Mi, or E, the E, e string. Now, for children, you might it's easier to think about uh, associations like fruit, or yeah, maybe you can tell them this is a, let's say just a, a melon, but not a watermelon. Melon, something that would fit under here. So melon, grapefruit, orange, and strawberry. But I said strawberry, not strawberry juice. So don't press down on it. You leave a little bit of air because eventually you'll need to open and close your hand. If you do this, 
I'm not going to be playing very well. Okay. So there we have it. Here comes the first piece. I'm going to play it once for you, then I'm going to give you the notes, and we're going to play it together. You might have noticed that I anticipate a little bit with my elbow before the time I need to pluck the string. Look. You see it's slightly before. And the second thing you want to do after you practice this a few times, try playing it with your eyes closed. See if you can just feel the whatever uh, uh, melon, strawberry, grapefruit or or uh, orange you have here, or if it's a lift that you're taking, try to do it. Think of fourth string, uh, fourth floor for the fourth string, the G, going down to first with your eyes closed. See if it works for you. Uh, that's the first piece, okay? So what I was playing is four times G, four times E, eight times A, and then we repeat, we play four times G, four times E, twice D, twice A, and two long E's. On each of them I count two. So it's two, two. Okay, so here let's try playing this again. I want you to note by ear, and then we will learn how to write and read notes as well. One, two, three, and great now just a small tip about pizzicato pizzicato is plucking okay in italian most of the terms we're going to use in violin playing come from Italian, okay? Pizzicato is played when you pluck in the area between the, um, well, <laughs> the nipple part of the finger. I don't really know what you would call that. I can look that up soon. And the, the rounded area. So somewhere in between here, that flatter area, right? And you have to do it in a rounded movement, no abrupt movements like that, okay? Really just Part of a circle that by chance you try to calculate when you're going to lift up and continue mm, let it vibrate but try to keep your thumb anchored under the fingerboard there i hope you you've managed and you find that interesting so far that was the first lesson